What is up, weirdos? You're listening to The Manic Pixie Weirdo. I'm Abigail, your host, and this is the podcast where we talk about all the different kinds of relationships that we have in our lives. And this week is our first mini pixie of 2022. So I thought I'd start it off by doing a listener email and a little bit about my relationship with you guys. So uh, first of all, thank you guys so much for listening. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, And if you have anything that you would like to email me about, anything at all, um, relationship advice, a topic, um, anything at all, uh, manicpixieweirdo at protonmail.com. You can email me there um, and I will read it and I will get back to you. Uh, So this week I had a listener email from Josh. Hi, Josh. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Um, And you emailed me about some relationship advice, uh, sex dilemma advice, options and tips. Um, So first of all, thank you so much for listening. And um, yeah, uh, I was really excited to read your email. Uh, Thank you so much for emailing me. And um, I'm really excited to talk about this uh, with everybody. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and give a disclaimer, go ahead and give a disclaimer up at the top that I am not a medical professional in any way. I'm not a licensed therapist. I don't have any sort of credentials um, with any any sort of, you know, therapy, psychology, psychiatry, any of it. So, you know, take what you like and leave the rest. I just wanted to give a little bit of a disclaimer there at the top. Um, But let's go ahead and just get started. So it's kind of a long email, which is fine. It's really good. Actually, I really enjoyed reading it. Um, So I'm just going to break it down by like paragraph by paragraph. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, So Josh, you said, so basically my girlfriend has this thing for my belly button and wants to lick my Audi belly button with her tongue and wants to blow loud raspberries all over my belly, including my Audi belly button. Um, I don't know what to do about this. Should I let her do this to my belly button or should I sit down and talk to her about this first because I've never had my belly button licked by her before or or blown on either. Let's just start with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's just start with that. Uh, first of all, again, thank you so much for emailing me about this. Um, I would go ahead and say that that's a conversation that you guys need to have together um, because any sort of sexual preferences or, you know, um, Anything sexually with your partner, I really, really am a big advocate for being open and having an open conversation and honest conversation with your partner about it. Uh, You do say in the email uh, later on that you're in a stable, comfortable relationship with each other um, and it's been working well. It's been working out really well so far Um, and you're actually hoping to get engaged soon. So congratulations on that. Um, And it does sound like you have a pretty good stable relationship and you're really happy with the relationship that you have. So I would just recommend for that specific thing with the belly button, um, you know, just just talk to your partner about it. Uh, Just be very open and honest about it. If you know and, and by open and honest, I mean like. Does it feel good? Do you like how this sensation feels? Is it something that you um, are interested in? Is it something that you don't really know about? Because that's totally fine too. Um, if you don't really know, because uh, like me personally, I've never had that experience with a partner where they wanted to lick my belly button and like um, and blow raspberries into it. I haven't had that experience. So I, it's something that I just simply don't know if I even like in a sexual context. So I would just be very, very open with your partner about the licking and the raspberries and you sh- and, and, and ask because you do ask in this in this email about, you know, should I do it back to her? Um, I I don't know if you should or not. That's something that you're going to have to talk with your partner about, I think, because it is a very, it is, it is about being very vulnerable and intimate. And part of being very vulnerable and intimate is to, you know, talk with your partner about what you like, what you don't like, what you're interested in doing and what you're interested in trying, um, all of those different kinds of things. 
Um, and so I would just, yeah, I guess my main advice would for that, for that specific, um, topic about the belly button is to just, just talk to your partner about it. I would definitely, um, you don't have to have like a five hour conversation about it. Just, just talk about it and just, just sort of, um, and, and be open to exploring that. I think that that's really the big thing is to be open to exploring that. It sounds like you're very open to exploring it and you're just trying to get some, you know, sort of outside advice about what you should do or what you shouldn't do. Um, I'm not going to tell you what you can and cannot do because it's, it's your body and it's your, um, your intimacy. And I can't really be the judge of that. That's something that you have to decide for yourself about, you know, whether or not you like it. I can't tell you if you like it or not. Um, and if you like it, then I would say, yes, um, go for it. Absolutely. And, and experiment with it. You know, I would, especially if you like it and you, um, are kind of enjoying it, I would experiment with it a little bit and see, uh, you know, what feels good in that area, what sensations you like, what, um, you know, what is it that you want out of this piece of your sexual relationship? I would also say you're doing great. You're doing a really good job um, because it's it's always good to get advice from outside sources, um, especially if you don't know them or if they have no medical experience. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I just, I don't have any sort of medical experience or any sort of therapy uh, therapy training, but that would just be my advice is to just, just be open and talk about it. Um, because the more that you're open and talk about it, the more you can explore what, what those, what those things are in a sexual experience that you want to have. Um, and you even say, I don't know what to do about this because my belly button in Audi as well. So it's like one of those unusual belly buttons that stick out a little bit. I think that's okay. I wonder, I'm, I'm very curious. Um, I'm wondering if your partner really wants to highlight that uniqueness about you and that, um, you know, that, that that's one of the things that your partner likes about you is that uniqueness and they're trying to just highlight it and be very sensual with it um, and try and make you feel as comfortable as you possibly can around it. Um, it does seem like you have a little bit of self-consciousness about it. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. I'm just sort of trying to read between the lines a little bit and that's okay. That's absolutely okay. But that's why I would say to communicate about it and, and, and be very open about the fact that like it is sort of a sensitive topic for you, um, or a sensitive, not not necessarily topic, excuse me, more of a sensitive area for you, something that you're a little bit more self-conscious about. And to just really, I, I would also, I would also say, go slow with it. Um, don't try and like rush into any sort of like hard activities with it. So like, I wouldn't go straight to like pouring candle wax or anything like that. I would, I would stick with like skin to skin contact and mouth to skin and, and be very delicate, I guess, with that area and that part of your body, because it is a very sensitive area and it can be very arousing. And so I would just, I would kind of go slow and take it like small steps, very small steps with the, uh, with the belly button thing. I think that it would, it would probably help to highlight and it would help. I, I, I really do am a big proponent and in the thinking that it will help to strengthen your bond as a, as partners, um, within the sexual context of the situation. I think that it, you know, it is a very beautiful part of the body. It is a very sensual part of the body. It's a very sensitive part of the body. And, um, so I would just go very slow and sort of like figure out what you like, what you don't like. Do you like the sensation of blowing raspberries around that area? If you don't like it, um, I wouldn't completely take it off the table, but I would just say maybe not right now. I'm not really into doing that right now. I'm more into the sensual licking or kissing or touching of that area. 
um, just until you get real comfortable with it. If that's something that you're interested in being comfortable with at all, you know, you absolutely have the right to say, no, I don't like this. I don't feel comfortable with this quite yet. I'm not, this isn't something that I'm really trying to have sexually in my sexual experiences right now. And that's okay to say. That's 100% okay to say too. But that's why I say to communicate and be open. And I'm also a big proponent of not taking anything off the table in, you know, maybe immediately is okay, but not taking everything off the table completely. Um, because it, you're, you're, you also, not only do you have the absolute 100% right to say, no, I don't like this. You also have the right to change your mind. You 100% have the right to change your mind. So allow yourself permission to be able to explore those those areas and those sexual activities um, in a safe, comfortable space. That's really what it's all about is a safe, comfortable space where you feel comfortable being able to say, I like this, I don't like this, or I I'm not open to this right now. And there's um, and there's so many other options other than those three. Uh, those are just the three that I came up with off the top of my head. So I would just say take it slow and be, you know, very cautious and, you know, sensual and just just very open to all of these different kinds of experiences that you're going to have in your sexual relationship uh, because you might try something and that you've never tried before or that you think sounds weird or crazy and it, it turns out you like it you enjoy it and that's that's great that's absolutely you know that's 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 what you want to have in a sexual experience is that openness and that willingness to be able to try various and unsundry things that you may or may not like so i would that's that's sort of my advice on that and just be very gentle with yourself you know, just be very, very gentle. Oh, you even say in the email right here, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I'm really self-conscious of my belly button as well due to it being an Audi. So I guess I didn't have to read between the lines. I just needed to read a little bit farther down. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> my fault. I completely missed that, that line right there. But yeah, I would just say, be aware of that about yourself and that, that self-consciousness and that, and I would be as open with your partner as you can about that that self-consciousness um and that that fear there there seems to be a little bit of fear there um because it makes me feel a bit weird odd not out due to having an Audi belly button that sticks out I know Audis aren't that popular in the world in the world only a certain number of people have Audis maybe like five to ten percent I don't know if that's true I don't know if that's true. I haven't looked that up. I'm not entirely sure if that's true, but it does seem like your partner is trying, is, is being um, delicate and being, and trying to highlight. That's what I would guess is that it's, is that it's a highlight of something that makes you stand out, makes you different, makes you a weirdo. And, you know, those words kind of get bad raps, but they're not bad. It's just different. And I think that's really what it is, is that she's trying to highlight something that you that is unique and different about you that she likes um, and wants you to know that she likes and enjoys it about you. So because it does seem like that's something that she's trying to highlight about you, I feel like it would be it's good to um, explore those things and to, you know, um, be open to that. Uh, that's really sweet, I believe. I think that's really, really sweet. That that's something that she's trying to highlight that she loves about you. Um, so yeah, so just be, just be open with her about it. I think that's, um, that's my biggest advice I can give to you on that. Um, I don't know if, and, and, and not just being open about it, about yourself and your, your sort of not position, but your how you're feeling and how you're um, understanding the situation and those kinds of things, um, and and I would ask her, you know, is this something that you would like me to do to you? Because I know for a fact that like there are things that my husband does to me that he would never want me to do to him um, in in a sexual experience. So sometimes it doesn't go both ways, and that's okay. You know, um, but 
I would just, I would just ask, just, just ask her. That's my best advice on that is just ask her if she would like it. Um, if you blew raspberries or licked her belly button or highlighted that aspect of her body, um, in that way. And, and if those aren't the things that she would like to have done to her, would she like her belly button sort of teased or, um, centrally played with, uh, would, is that something that she would be open to or, or wants to do? Um, because like I said, it doesn't necessarily go both ways and it doesn't have to, that's okay. That's okay that it does, um, and does not. But then you say, uh, so then you go on to say, I would, I would be okay touching blowing raspberries in her innie belly button, though I know she has an innie because she told me. Um, also, can you give me any advice, options, tips on how I can show love or intimate love to my girlfriend, tummy or belly button? How she can do the same for my tummy belly button as well. I want to try having my tummy belly button played with to see if I like the feeling of it. Would you recommend loud raspberries to be blown on her tummy belly button? Or should I wiggle my tongue all over the any belly button and lick her belly button so her belly So her belly button completely wet first before blowing into her tummy belly button to tickle her. Um, That, again, is something that uh, I think you're going to have to talk with her about. Because like I said, I don't know if that's something that she's going to be open to or want to do um, as a reciprocal reciprocal thing um, in a sexual experience. And so um, it's because it's entirely possible that she really wants to highlight it in you and bring attention to it and make you less self-conscious about your Audi. Um, and she doesn't really want any, you know, sort of action down there on her. Um, that's a possibility. Another possibility is that she would like it on herself. Um, that's something that y'all are going to have to play with a little bit. I think in your sexual experiences, that's something that you're going to have to, you know, um, not just talk about, but try different things. Um, like I like it when my, when my stomach, um, like my husband will give me loud raspberries, um, on my stomach. It's more than like a tickling, like giggling sensation. Um, it's not really a tease or a sexual thing. It's more of a, like a tickling, like, you know, um, we're just playing around kind of a thing. Um, and it can't, that, that does eventually, that can lead to sexual activity on our part. Um, but I've never done it in like a sexual way, but I do like the feeling of those on my stomach. I do. And so, um, I don't, I am somebody though, who personally, I don't like feeling, I wouldn't like the, like, I wouldn't like the licking. I wouldn't, because I don't like being, for some reason, I'm very sensitive in that area about like the feeling of wet. I don't like the feeling of wet um, on my stomach area. Uh, I don't know what it is about that feeling. It's just very uncomfortable for me, and I don't really enjoy that sensation. Um, and so it's my, my, my point in saying that is that it's just it's different for everyone. And so you're going to have to, uh, you know, sort of openly communicate what you're open to and then just ask her about what – if what, if anything, would she like done in that area for her? Um, because like I said, it doesn't necessarily go both ways. Uh, so yeah, um, I hope that helps a little bit. I'm really sorry if that doesn't help. Uh, like I said, take what you want, take what you like and leave the rest. I don't really, um, that's really all I have for that. I'm really sorry. I hope that helps. I really hope that helps. Um, so then the second part of this email is so sweet because it goes on and you're saying, also, we've been talking about babies as well. We want to try for baby for a baby together. And I've never been sexually active before in my life or had sex before either with my partner. We've been talking about baby names so we could go. So we got a list of baby names we like. We, uh, were thinking of trying for a baby daughter or baby son, uh, first of all, that's awesome. Congratulations. That's so cool. Um, you did say that you wanted that you've always kind of wanted to be yeah, right here. I've always wanted to be a daddy to a daughter or son. That's so awesome. Um, 
Now, the only thing that I'm going to say about this is that you you did say, uh, how can I become sexually active having sex for the first time or how to get into it as well for the very first time? So that right there is a very, very good question. Um, I would very much recommend taking it slow, especially if for your first time having a sexual experience, taking it very slow and um, being as gentle and delicate. I keep using that word, but that's really the best word that I can come up with. Gentle and delicate and soft um, for your first time. Because your first time is going to be, uh, it's well, for, it's your only first time, but also it's going to be a little bit rough in the sense that like you're not going to really have any sort of idea what you're doing or how, um, what you like and what you don't like and what you're interested in. So I would caution you to take it slow and just be very, very gentle, um, not just with your partner, but with yourself and allow yourself the space to say, "Mm, I'm not really into that. I don't really like that feeling. Give yourself permission to like and enjoy it as well. (laughs) Give yourself permission to have that freeing experience. Um, Now, as far as babies are concerned, that is a very scary topic for me because that's something that I, uh, that it's like a huge fear of mine um, is having children and like what and everything that goes into having children and like all of the things. So I personally am not ready to have kids right now. Uh, that's why I'm on birth control. But I mean, if you think that you're in a place and in a position that, you know, and with somebody that you would really like to do that with, that you would like to, you know, do this insane thing called life with, do this crazy thing called life with, and you want to have a partner in crime sort of, um, then I would say go for it. And if this is the person that you're picking, that's fantastic. That's so great. I'm so happy for you. Um, I, I'm really, really glad that you found somebody that you want to share that first experience sexually with. Um, that's really, really rare. That can be really, really rare. Um, and it, it, But it's also kind of cool. It's also really kind of cool. Um, and so I just want you to know that you have support. And we here at the Manic Pixie Weirdo, we love you. Um, We care about you and we just want you to have, you know, maybe not the, because I don't think anybody's first time having sex is the best. Like that's not going to be their, their, their best time having sex. It's just the first. Um, But it can, that doesn't mean that it can't be special or you can't have, you know, a good experience or an open experience or an honest experience. You can have all of those things and it still be your first time. Um, but just, I would just recommend, because that's that's just personal for me. I personally uh, would prefer to have taken it, like take it slow. Um, because I, like when I, so before I met my husband, when we were, like when I was dating other people, um, that was something that was, kind of on the table for me um, pretty early uh, because I'm a pretty sexual person and I need to be sexually compatible with the person that I was going to be with. And, um, but I was also very shy about having a sexual experience. Um, I would generally uh, have to be, like if I was doing something sexual um, without a partner, I would need I, I, I wasn't the best at being able to effectively communicate and being able to be as open and um, 
forthcoming with the way that I was feeling about a sexual experience that I was going to have or that I was having. Um, so that's really, that's like my biggest advice is, is to take it. And so I would, I would recommend, the reason I would recommend taking it slow is because that experience can be kind of daunting for the first time because like I said you're you're inexperienced you just don't know you just simply don't know what you like and what you don't like and what you're open to and all of the things and so I would just take it um slow and be as gentle as possible because it you know it can be a daunting task it can be very scary it can be very um overwhelming it can be all of those things especially for your first time and so I would I would just be aware of that and uh, be honest about um, that fear a little bit and that um, what is the word I'm looking for that I don't know. Um, I can't think of the word that I'm, I can't think of the word I'm, I want to use, but I, I would definitely, definitely, you know, be, be as gentle. And I keep saying that, um, because I can't think of the other freaking word that I want to use. I'm so sorry, Josh. I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah, so just be gentle. Be gentle with yourself. Be gentle with your partner. Be gentle with the whole situation. Be very, very gentle. And um, talk to your partner about um, any sort of like fear that you have or... Um, you know, disclose all of those things to your partner because it does sound like your partner is incredibly supportive, um, and very, and, and very, um, very gentle just, you know, from what little I know, uh, from this, you know, from this email, from the, from what little I know, it does seem like your partner is very open to trying to make this experience for you as, like the best one that it can possibly be. And that's wonderful. That's absolutely amazing. Um, so just go slow, take it slow. I, I don't, I don't for the, for the sex, for the sex, um, just take it slow and be gentle. I, I don't really know if I can give you any great advice on, what you know about the babies because that just seems like it's moving really fast for me um for me personally that would just be moving like I move at a snail's pace I really move at a snail's pace in my relationships um in my long-term relationships as far as uh those kinds of big major life decisions go and so I you know I mean, if I was going any slower, I'd be going backwards kind of a thing. Like, it's just, I, I'm super cautious. I'm like a deer in headlights. Like, I just want, I'm super skittish. I don't want to make any big major life decisions until there have been massive conversations, multiple massive conversations about it. Like, I don't, um, that's not, it's just not something that I would rush into. Um, especially if you haven't had sex for the first time yet. Um, I would, I would sort of tackle that first having your first sexual experience um first and sort of exploring that um and what you're open to and 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 what you like and what you don't like and what you kind of might think you like or you know any of those things I would I would kind of break it up into like segments and and start with the first step being the sexual experience that you're going to have um, and then I would go towards, um, the having children or, um, if you, if you would like, uh, if that's not the next step that you would like, um, you know, have a conversation about 
your marriage and getting engaged. Um, that's that's another major life decision that was something that I um, I didn't want to be just sort of out of the blue. And like I wanted to have conversations. So like we'll talk a little bit the uh, blah, blah 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 apologies. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit more about that um in the coming weeks about sort of my um the discussions that I had with my partner and my husband and um those kinds of things around engagement. Um but for right now I would just say uh I would have a conversation about the engagement, but I uh, and do it in whatever order you feel comfortable doing. Don't, don't, you don't have to listen to me. Don't, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Okay. There's really not. Um, so you kind of, I, I think we need to break it up into like three different things. So like, or into like several different things. So like the belly button thing first, I would have a conversation about that. I would then have a conversation about, um, you know, your first sexual experience. Then I would have a conversation about getting engaged and uh, or getting married. And then another conversation would be having kids and those kinds of things. It does sound like you're already having the discussion about having kids though. And that's really, really good. That's a really good sign um, that you are in a comfortable, stable relationship like you say. Um, and so I'm almost kind of wondering if the marriage aspect of it is kind of like a formality um, that, by the way, um, is not necessarily what it used to be. Like our views on marriage, um, generali generationally speaking, uh, cannot speak. English is hard, you guys. I'm really sorry. Uh, but generationally speaking, I think marriage has become more of a formality for some people. Um, that's kind of what it is for me and my husband is it's more of a formality. Uh, it's not really something that we're, we, like I said, we're taking it, we're doing it our own way. We're figuring, we're, we're creating our own path and we're doing it our own way. Um, and so uh, I would recommend you do the same thing find out what works for you guys and then do that don't really pay attention to what other people are doing or what society is telling you to do or any of those kinds of things I would recommend finding what works for you guys first and having conversations about what works for you guys first and then doing that and and just ignore what other people are saying and doing and um you know, because we live in a different time now. You don't necessarily have to be married in order to have children with somebody. So if that's, if it's more of a formality for you, then, you know, that's fine because it's more of a formality for me too. But it is something that um, I think is an important conversation to have. Like I said, there's no right or wrong way to do it. You can do it however you want to do it. And I would recommend finding the way that you like the best and that works for you in your lives not what works for everybody else because what works for everybody else doesn't necessarily work for you and so and that's okay it doesn't have to it doesn't have to work for you um just because it works for other people does not mean it's supposed to work for you or has to work for you uh you know i saw this thing on <laughs> uh, on social media one time and it was like traditions are just you know, pr peer pressure from old people or traditions or peer pressure from dead people, excuse me. And it's true. It's very true. Um, so my point in saying that is that you don't necessarily have to go to the traditional route. You can, you can break out of that and it's okay. And to do your own thing and to find what works for you and what you like and what you don't like and allowing yourself the room to grow and be open about that space with yourself and with each other. Um, I mean, if you, if that's something that you really want to do and you really are looking forward to having kids and this is the person that you want to have kids with, then I would recommend that being a, that would, that being a big conversation in and of itself. Um, and it does sound like you're already having open and honest conversation and dialogue about that. And that's really good. 
that's that's really good. You are. It does sound like you guys are taking all of the right steps. Um, and I think that's awesome. I think that's really admirable. And I really, really am happy for you about that. Um, that's really amazing. I'm super excited to see where this goes for you. Um, but I would just, that's, I keep repeating it, but that's really my biggest advice is that I can't tell you what's going to work for you or for you and your partner or for your partner. I can't tell you any of those things. Those are things that you, you guys have to talk about and you guys have to discuss and you guys have to be open and honest with each other about it. And it sounds super cool that you guys already are doing that. And I'm really proud of you for doing that because that's a big step. That's a very mature step in a relationship that you have with somebody sexually, you know, maritally, with children, any of those, any of those kinds of things, because those are all different kinds of relationships that you have in your life. And but without that open dialogue and without that communication, that's where stuff starts to break down and then you're not on the same page. So like I said, I would definitely break it up into a couple of different things, a couple of different conversations and then have those conversations. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have them all at once because they are kind of big, heavy topics. Um and that's that's good. That's good to have those conversations about those big, heavy topics with your partner, because these are big, major life decisions that you're making. And it's better to go in um, feeling safe and wanted and like you have you have the freedom to be able to express what you're thinking sexually, what you're thinking as far as a marriage standpoint is going, what you're thinking um, as far as children are concerned. And that's a very mature step to take. And I'm so proud of you guys. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So that's kind of all I have for you, Josh. I hope that helps. I don't know how much that's helpful, but I really hope it helps. Um, thank you so much for reaching out. Feel free to reach out again. If I'm completely off and you hated what I said, um, I can totally reevaluate and we'll just do another episode on it. It's totally fine. Uh, we'll just do a follow-up on it. Um, but I thank you so much for reaching out and it really means the world to me that you guys, uh, are listening and, um, you're reaching out and you want, you, you value my opinion enough to want my advice. That's so sweet and amazing. And I, I'm so, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful and I'm so happy. Um, and thank you so much, Josh, for sending me this wonderful email. Um, I really enjoyed taking the time to read it and um, sort of figuring out what I was going to say to you. Uh, I know I kind of repeated myself a lot, but that's, you know, that's just, I just can't emphasize enough on, you know, communication and having discussions about this stuff with your partner. Um, I hope that helps. Uh, if you guys have anything else that you would like me to talk about, if you have any sort of relationship, sex, dilemma, advice, opinions, tips, anything that you want, um, topics that you want me to cover, any sort of mini pixie stuff, um, anything at all, you can reach out to me at mandapixieword.protonmail.com. Uh, that is the official email for this podcast. Uh, you can reach out to me on Twitter at MP Weirdo Podcast or the TikTok and the Instagram is the underscore main underscore weirdo one. Uh, you can also leave me a voicemail on our website at manicpixiewirdopodcast.com. Um, so yeah, those are the big ways to get in touch with me. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you learned a little bit. Uh, yeah. As always, be kind and stay weird. Bye, guys. <laughs>